we don't have to tell him that. It's Duke's world. We're just living in it. What in the school disco is going on here? Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my Pony Duke's little holiday that he's been on, his little vacay. Um, Also, I'm going to be talking about electric fence disasters, something that went very badly wrong that I feel quite bad about. And then also I'm going to be talking about um, a concert I went to recently, which is a little bit different for me. But anyway, before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, but they also ship all over the world. And guys, I feel like, don't don't come at, come at me for this one, but autumn is round the corner. It's coming to the end of summer now. And do you know what that means? It means it won't be long till winter, so stock up on your rugs for your horses because I'm this person, you know, autumn rolls around, I'm like, oh my goodness, their winter rugs from last year are destroyed. They need new ones. So get down to Red Post, check them out at redpostequestrian.co.uk and get your equestrian autumn and winter needs from them in advance. But anyway, let's get into today's episode. Starting off, I thought we'd start with my pony, Duke. So if you didn't know, Duke, my little guy, he is a four-year-old Welshie, he's a grey, and he is actually from World Horse Welfare, a charity that I'm patron for, and we rehomed him over three years ago, almost three years ago to the day that I'm recording this. A few days ago, it was our, it was Duke's gotcha day. I don't know if that's like a thing that people say, it's something that I've only really heard the last couple of years, people say, but it's kind of like the anniversary that you brought your pet home from wherever they came from so yeah duke is a rescue pony um i've got loads of stories about him and his story on my channel but anyway so um world horse welfare yes they were like hey to celebrate you know you rehoming him for three years and also they were launching something called stable squad which is very cool if you haven't heard of that please go and check it out um what it is is basically you sign up you're part of the squad the money goes towards world horse welfare and obviously the charity and helping horses you also get a little toy lemure pony with it which is very cute which is exclusive at the moment they're like little mini ones um you also get three magazines a year you get stickers obviously this is aimed at my kind of younger audience however i have actually had one lady who is 27 message me that she's joined up to stable squad and also somebody else who is 51 so i do have a very broad audience of all ages um so yeah thank you to you guys who joined up because they're like look I mean to be fair I'm I, I was very excited about the little mini pony as well uh, but also it raises money for world horse welfare it does a lot of good so please check it out and join up if you can or donate to world horse welfare because they are an incredible charity that do incredible things with horses and I would hate to think what would have happened to Duke if they had never taken him in in his time of need um but anyway so yes they were launching that um I, oh yeah basically I'm filming this the day I'm recording this podcast the day after I did my meet and greet. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who came to my meet and greet, who came and said hello. It was, you were all so, so lovely. And also a lot of you got to meet Duke as well, which was awesome. So, oh yeah, all of you got to meet Duke actually. Um, So I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit later. But first, the other day, I needed to get Duke ready for going to World Horse Welfare. So one thing that um, you might know is that every kind of six months, they um, we get a random check from someone from World Horse Welfare. They ring us up being like, hello, this day is Duke's checking day. We're going to come and make sure that he's all good um, and that you're looking after him properly. So um, we get that. But this felt like this was like the biggest check because he was going back to them and he was going back to all the people that used to care for him when he was a baby. And it kind of felt like, I feel like a mother and my child has grown up and he's gone off to spread his wings and, you know, he's leaving me for a week to go to kind of like camp or something like summer camp and I was like oh my goodness I hope he's a good boy I hope he doesn't like embarrass me too much I hope he's like I don't know do you know what I mean like I was just like I really hope he puts his best behavior on that you know he's not I mean it's not that he's naughty or anything but at the end of the day you know horses are horses they're animals they they're all of my horses are very quirky but he is normally very well behaved and I was like I just really hope that <laughs> that stays the same um but anyway so we before he was being picked up where can I just say he was being picked up in style. So we knew we were going to do this meet and greet and we had like a whole game plan with World Horse Welfare because obviously Duke's happiness and well-being is our top priority. So this boy, 
he was traveling in class. They were like, oh, no, 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 we've rescheduled the person that's going to pick him up. He had a horse box with air conditioning, with everything. I was like, what else is in the back there? Is there like a mini bar or something? <laughs> like, I was thinking, cool, maybe there's somebody there that's going to like massage his hooves. Like, he was going in full style, like an A-class celebrity that he is. Um, but anyway, so we're like, okay, Duke, we need to give you a pan possession beforehand. So I um, gave him a good old groom, gave him a bath washed his tail because that is the one thing that is always absolutely filthy so got some blue and purple shampoo on that and just let it soak for a little bit and I was like okay Duke you need to be looking you know incredible you need to be it needs to be a good a good hair day so we got him all pampered up all looking good even oiled his hooves so he was looking super cute when normally I mean norm he is always super cute don't get me wrong that boy he is adorable but there are some times where you know horses they just like to go and they like to get dirty and it's always before a big event or something or a show so I was like okay Duke you need to look good then it was time for Duke to be picked up and this is where it came to my head I was like hmm maybe I should have done some loading practice with him because last time he went in a horse box was when he was being dropped off at our house oh no when we were picking him up sorry from World Horse Welfare three years ago and he was only one at the time and now he's four. So that's, you know, a big, when you, we think of his life, it was, yeah, three quarters of his life ago that he was last in horse box. So that is a long, long time. Um, but I thought, you know what? He was really good to load last time. Really good to travel. Like, especially as we're like, what? three, four hours away from, wait, three hours away from Mortals Welfare? Depending on traffic. You never know. UK roads, traveling, not always great. So anyway, um, yeah, the lady came and I, oh, I felt I was a bit emotional. I was a bit sad. I was like having to give, give my baby away. I was, it was only for a week. It was only for a week. It's me. Calm down. You got, you go away on work trips longer than that sometimes. But just him not being at the yard, like it felt so empty. I mean, there was still three wild horses kicking about, causing chaos and havoc. But there was one, one less little guy. Um, but anyway, then it was time to lead him up. So I thought. Let's make this the best, most positive experience. And Duke, if you didn't know, is very food motivated. So I, so the lady that was going to take him away, I was like, you can be the food lady if that's okay. I was like, here is his bucket full of Bailey's low-cal balancer. If you just walk ahead and I'll lead him, then he'll just, we'll just, I, it did feel, I did feel like a creepy child catcher. What's it called? Is it the child capturer? capture capture person the the creepy man in Chitty bang bang that's what i felt like i was like come on little baby into the horse box follow follow all the snacks we have do not get into cars or vehicles with strangers that is just a little um disclaimer there but that's what i felt i felt like i was being a creepy person being like come on little duke follow the food anyway you did not have to ask that horse twice. You did not have to even ask him once because as soon as he saw that yellow food bucket with food in, he was chasing this poor lady down our driveway. I was having to hold him back like he was some sort of beast. We were, he was piaffing on the spot. He was trotting. I was like, Duke, calm down. So when I tell you that boy didn't even walk, he didn't even run. He leaped into that horse box like he was chasing his firstborn child. He was go. He, there was nothing stopping him getting in there. And I was like, perfect. That was easier than expected because I wasn't sure what he was going to be like loading. But yeah, he jumped in. And then Duke, he is small, but he can make a lot of noise. And we kind of sometimes describe him as, if anybody watched the old Looney Tunes sort of cartoons, he is like the Tasmanian devil. He just sometimes turns into this little mini tornado. And as she was driving away, we could just hear this little Welshie like banging around in the back. Apparently he traveled very well and there was no chaos. And it was just at the beginning where um, we he might have knocked his food bucket over and all the Bailey's low-cal balancer was just all over the floor. And he was a little snuffler and just snuffling up all of the food and might have made a bit of noise while doing that. So anyway, um, one thing that me and my dad did notice that when it came to feeding time in the morning or what we call feeding time at the zoo, um, there was no little Welshy, you know, trying to, he's got, a little platform on his stable door where he can put his hooves on so he can poke his head over but one question I do get asked a lot or one thing I get told to do a lot is like oh my goodness I can't believe you've not put a smaller door on Duke's stable for Duke and I'm like no 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 
this is a health and safety thing. Duke has got a jump on him. He has got a leap. And if he had a smaller jaw, I would bet money on that he would jump over it. Like that is that is a thing. So because we put him in Mickey's stable the other day because his stable had all been cleared out because we knew that he was going. We'd taken all the shavings out, let the mats kind of dry. And, you know, it was like a derelict zone, like a no dukey zone. Um, there was like, we cleared out all his water, water bucket, buckets and things. So while we were waiting, waiting for the lady to arrive, we were like, perfect. We'll pop, pop him in Mickey's stable, all good. Oh my goodness. This horse, this little guy, he put both his front hooves over the top of the stable door because he's not used to having one like a little bit lower because where his stable is it's kind of on a bit of an angle he put both his hooves over the front I was like oh my gosh this poor woman is gonna think what is this wild child pony that I'm gonna have to drive three hours all the way to World Horse Welfare with anyway luckily as I said he was a good boy it was all good he was very calm apparently he fell asleep a little bit in the horse box as well so all was well and also I felt like a little mum as well, getting little updates of my child because um, World Horse Welfare filmed a little video of us, um, of him like being loaded out of the horse box and he was all calm and was led off like a a champ. I don't know, he had his head held high. He was strutting his stuff. He was like, guys, guess what? I'm back. (laughs) I assume there aren't any horses there that were still there from three years ago because, well, they probably, well, hopefully they have been rehomed but obviously a lot of the handlers and a lot of the volunteers there will be the same. So um, it was so lovely to um, see him like reunited with the people that took care of him for a whole first year of his life, basically, because, um, yeah, if you didn't know, Duke was taken in to World Horse Welfare when he was only a few days old. He had around the clock care. He was bottle fed. So sometimes I do think he thinks he's a little bit of a human sometimes <laughs> because he had more of like a human mother than a horse mother. Um, but anyway, it was, yeah, he was orphaned, little baby. Anyway, um, so there we go. Um, So yeah, he arrived and apparently he was good as gold the whole time, which makes my heart melt. We got loads of updates. They took him in the big indoor arena and I've got a video of him seeing himself in the mirror for the first time and it is adorable. I'm gonna have to post that on my socials at some stage because it is just too cute. I'm just melting when I was getting all the Duke updates coming through. Um, He also made a friend called Humbug that he went out in the paddock with. So that was super cute. And it was lovely to see them both. Um, Apparently also Humbug was like, I want to be the dominant horse. And Duke was like, nah, sister. And was as sassy as can be. And that is one thing. When we got him from World Horse Welfare, they did say, you can put him in a paddock with any horse. It could be an 18-hand shire giant big boy stallion. And Duke would not care. He'd be like, he does have, he maybe has a little bit of little man syndrome where he thinks that, you know, he can take anyone on even though he is only about 11 hands high and is only four years old. But you know what? We don't have to tell him that. It's Duke's world. We're just living in it. So anyway, so he um, was he was like, humbug, no thank you. Here is my sass. Here is my bum. You are not the boss of me. Anyway, slay Duke. So um, yeah, he had a lovely time. We got lots of little updates of him having his little holiday because the main thing that we wanted is for him to settle in, even though it's kind of like... I was going to say his previous home, World Horse Welfare, always like to say, no, it's me. You are his first home. We just looked after him for a little while, but he is your home. So anyway, um, but yes, so he settled in really well and we wanted to make sure that he was all good after the journey, especially before the chaos of yesterday where he got to meet lots of people. So at the beginning, he was like, oh my gosh, yes, people. And then, of course, in Duke fashion, food was first Uh, so he was in like this area called the crew yard which is basically like a little mini barn he had this massive area that he'd go in that was full of shave um not shaving straw um and he also had lots of like unlimited hay so um the whole time he was pretty much eating hay from his hay net and there were a few people he came over and duke does this thing and luckily a lot of you guys who came and met him know this already but he will put his bum to you And most people would see that like, oh my gosh, a horse has put its bum to me. It's going to kick me. Oh, no, no, no. Duke, he does that. It means please give me a bum scratch. So thank you to everybody who gave Duke a bum scratch and a head scratch and just scratches in general. That is his favorite thing. So and also I apologize if he just stood there eating his haylage or hay and had his bum to you because I can't lie. 
I mean, he does have a nice bum, but Duke, that is not what people want to see. They want to see your cute, adorable face. Anyway, there was one part like halfway through the day where he had his little afternoon nap and oh my goodness. I like I don't really see my horses lie down that much because obviously they go to bed at night time and that's when they like to lie down. That's when they like to use their poo as a pillow and get absolutely filthy. But Duke, he he had a busy day. He had a busy time, so he had a little midday uh, post lunch nap. And oh my gosh, you know I don't know if anybody else is on this side of the internet. But I, for a while, was on the side of the internet where basically it was people filming their cats sleeping or going into what I'm going to call loaf mode, where they have all of their legs tucked up underneath them and even their tail as well tucked up underneath them. And they would rank on what scale of loaf they were. And if they were a 10 out of 10 loaf, all of their legs and everything was tucked underneath and they literally just looked like a cat in a loaf, loaf of bread kind of form. Oh my gosh, Duke... He was lying down in loaf mode. I was deceased. I thought I was going to cry. It was the cutest thing. And he was also like properly asleep. You know when horses, they kind of like, they close their eyes and they kind of like, you can see them kind of nodding off and their head kind of start to go. Like he was sound asleep in loaf mode. And I thought my heart was going to explode. It was adorable. Um, And yeah, also got to meet all of you guys and then he did wake up and did have some more scratchies after that but he was so well behaved um and then I also at the end of the day I did a live Q&A um where I was asked some questions then you guys asked me some questions as well so thank you to everyone who asked me questions I also said because there were so many of you that had so many questions I'm, I'm gonna have to do maybe like a Q&A podcast or a Q&A um video on my channel at some stage because there are a lot of questions from you guys and I'm really sorry that we couldn't answer them all but if you didn't ask them thank you very much and if you if you did come along thank you very much you're all so lovely um but yes yeah, so I was doing this live Q&A in this indoor arena with all these people and Duke was just walking around and he was so good so well behaved because that is quite a big atmosphere and he is only four and he has never done something like that but um he had his handler that he'd been working with for a week and also he um had done lots of desensitization training in the arena to get ready for the big day and to get ready for everything and I'm just so proud of him I just want to say a huge thank you to World Horse Welfare for very kindly hosting the meet and greet and also to them to for looking after my baby it was also really nice one of the head people there at the Glenda Spooner farm came up to me and my dad and they were just like I don't know we both felt like parents on parents evening or yeah is it like people yeah parents evening teacher parent evening that kind of thing where um she was just like saying all these lovely things about Duke and how well we'd like done all his handling and in-hand training because we did only take him on when he just turned one and um they wanted to make sure like we had to basically do all these tests to make sure that number one we were the right home for him and number two that we were good enough to continue his education on the ground and make sure that he has good ground manners and oh my goodness it we were just like our hearts melting it was I felt like that's that's the quote of the podcast my heart Heart was melting but we were both there just like oh like hearing all these lovely things about him and saying how well we'd been looking after him and oh it just made me so happy um but anyway he is not home yet he's got a few more days to just decompress after the busy day and then he'll be making his journey home so I'm sure all the horses are going to be so excited when he comes home because for a while Joey went through this thing where every time he went out in the field or went out in his paddock he was like looking over at Mickey Mickey and Duke's paddock like where is the little one where is he? Where has he gone? Where is my little guy? Because obviously Duke, Duke and Joey, they actually do get along very well. They're like besties also. Casper, Casper could not care. Casper lives in his own world. He does not care about anyone else unless you're in the Casper club. Um, But yeah, he, Casper and Duke, they're not as much besties. Although actually, Casper did escape a few, like maybe like, was it last winter? I think it was last winter, a friend of mine was looking after the horses while I was away and there was just this picture of Casper in the Mickey and Duke's paddock and we were like, um, you're not supposed to be there. So um, obviously Casper must like them enough to go into their paddock, although I think it was to steal their haylage. So maybe not. Maybe he was just thinking food first, but Duke was standing very close to Casper and seemed like he was like, hello, big brother. I love you. I want to be your friend. Please be my friend. And Casper was just like, I'm just here eating my food. Anyway, on to, I feel like I've talked a lot about Duke in today's episode. So on to my other horses, on to electric fence disasters, because that's probably what you all want to hear. All right, let me set the scene. I was taking Casper 
into his paddock. The electric fence was off because I was putting Casper in his paddock. I kept the electric fence off because I knew that my dad was coming along with Joey to put him in his paddock. Now, we had a bit of a miscommunication. So we, our paddocks, we give them numbers and letters. So we have paddock one, paddock two, paddock three, paddock four, along the kind of like left-hand side of our stables. So at the moment, the Casper and Joey have been going in paddock two, and paddock three and then on the other side we have paddock a which is mickey and duke's paddock and then we have paddock b which is the one next to mickey and duke's paddock okay i hope this is making sense i thought because i put casper in paddock two that joey would be going in paddock three. Oh no 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 apparently he was going in paddock b which has more grass because every now and again we put him in there to let him have some grassy time because casper is not allowed grassy time because if not he will explode um so anyway (laughs) so i didn't realize this at this stage um so my dad says to me oh i'm taking joey down to his paddock is the electric fence off and i said oh yeah because i've just put casper in his one i thought he would get the gist that Cat the paddocks on the left hand side, the numbered ones, the electric fence was not on. Dad goes down to paddock B with Joey, which is on. And what does he do? He touches the electric fence, gets a massive shock, and I hear this humongous scream. And I'm like, what has gone on? What is this chaos? And then I have a very angry dad, which is like, you said the electric fence was off and I went and touched it. And and now I've been, I've been zapped by the electric fence. Why didn't you just turn it off? And And I was like, dude, I didn't know that he was going in paddock B. Paddock B is not the normal paddock for this week. You should have told me that. So we had a little bit of a miscommunication. So I got very badly told off. Well, not really, because I'm the boss. But it was quite funny. I found it very funny. Did Joey get zapped or was he okay? He was okay. okay. Joey did not get zapped, so do not worry. No horses were zapped by the electric fence. Only my dad. So he doesn't sound very, very happy about that. But you know what? It woke him up kept him on his toes no I'm joking that was I do feel very bad I do feel very bad but next time we have learnt that when we are moving horses to their paddocks we need to make sure that we specify which paddock we're talking about I'm just saying just saying if he had been using his listening ears he would have heard that I said yes because I've just put Casper in his paddock and I haven't turned it back on yet surely he would know that I was meaning about paddock three but obviously not. So there we go. There have been uh, there have been a few times where I've been zapped by the electric fence. To be fair, our electric fence, we, as you guys know, Casper's been going through a little electric fence escapeeding kind of phase. And did he escape again yesterday, even though the electric fence was on? Yes, he did. I don't know how. I don't know what. But anyway, so we were driving home from World Horse Welfare last night and I got a call from my mum being like, oh, I've just looked over at the horses And Casper is in Joey's paddock. So while we're away, every now and again, my mum will, you know, check up on the horses, make sure that they're all good, make sure that they've... Even though they have grass in their paddock, we like to make sure that they have a bit of haylage as well because, anyway, just to keep them happy, especially on days where we're away, we're like, we want to make sure that they are all happy, full bellies, that kind of thing. Um, And my mum was like, oh, I checked checked during, like, lunchtime. I saw in the field that there was still loads of haylage left. I saw two horses, all good. We think that Casper must have escaped at the beginning of the day and it wasn't even for food because he had two haylage nets in his paddock, didn't eat them, decided to escape, either jump over the fence, go under it, I don't know how, into Joey's paddock and luckily like they did used to go out together before their dietary requirements changed and we do have to keep them separate for dietary reasons and for health reasons casper is getting a little bit chunkier and we've got to make sure that he doesn't have as much food as joey but anyway it was fine yesterday it was all good they were both very happy and we came home we were like um casper you're not supposed to be here and we know that he probably escaped at the beginning of the day because his two haylage nets were full so he wasn't even escaping to get joey's food it was obviously bromance just feeling a bit left out wanted to go and join him i mean they were in they're in paddocks next door to each other and they can groom each other over the fence because I'm very much like all horses need to have a friend they can't be out on their own that kind of thing but yeah it was just it was they were just chilling 
two bros chilling in their paddock together. So there we go. In the winter, when the grass isn't as sugary because Casper is very prone to laminitis, we do normally put those two boys together because, again, I always like my horses to be together and being like a little herd. But again, dietary reasons, Casper, we don't want to risk laminitis because that can be fatal. We do not want that. We don't want any poorly Caspies. Um, so yes, anyway... There we go. That was our little little story of them two escaping. But all was well. All was well. Next up, I thought I would talk to a spontaneous concert trip that I went to with a few friends. Now, um, the artist that I went to go and see, if you didn't know, I know, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like people are very judgy of music tastes and things, or of people because I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I love this artist, and then I find out in like a few years time, actually they've been cancelled, and then somebody listens to this podcast, but like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you support someone who does that kind of thing. But anyway, um, so I went to a Declan McKenna concert, and I was really excited. So if you don't know who he is, you'll probably know his song Brazil that went like viral online um i'm not going to sing it to you because i don't want no 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 i don't want to sing it to you i'm gonna sing it in a bad singing voice then you don't actually judge my singing i heard you live down the river somewhere six rings and grizzly bear no 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 (laughs) that's that's all you're getting that's all you're getting no 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 okay um definitely probably said some words wrong um but but I had a, I had a great time. I did do my revision beforehand. Although I do I you know I don't want people like she's a fake fan. But you know when you're going to a concert, you got to you got to like just like the f- two weeks before at the very least. All you listen to is that artist's music. You've got to listen to all of their albums because you don't know what songs are going to pop up. You don't know if there's going to be like a little mystery one. But anyway, I had I had a great time, and um, I tell you what. It was the most random concert ever because I'm pretty sure he was playing at like Broadmasters or some sort of, um, you know, big UK music festival over in like Cornwall somewhere, like literally the day after. And I was like, this is so random, especially as the place that I went and saw it at was a little seaside town that when I tell you this, it, this seaside town, it's not like Brighton. It's not a cool place to be. It's not the hip, young, you know, if you are over the age of 18 then if you live in this seaside town, you just leave. And I know that because my friend went to school there and she had a lot of friends that used to live in this little cute seaside town and they have all left. I'd say the average age of that seaside town is probably about 65 but or maybe even 70, 80 because basically it's one of those seaside towns where a lot of people who maybe lived in the city or live in towns and they're like, you know what I want to do when I retire? I want to go and live by the sea. So it's one of those seaside towns. So the population is either families with children or old people. (laughs) So um, yeah, so if you're yeah over the age of 18, you've probably moved out, gone somewhere else, gone to uni, that kind of thing, because my friend went to school there. Um, So when I went to this concert, I thought Declan McKenna concert, most people, most of his audience are probably, I don't know, in their mid 20s that kind of thing when we arrived at this concert because also just to set the scene it was in a like art gallery it wasn't even in like a proper concert like place so it was very random I don't know if like I don't know maybe he's got family or friends there and was just like yep we'll go there because he is a pretty big artist um but it was so it was it honestly it was one of the best concerts I've been to but (laughs) when we first arrived it felt like we had walked into a sports hall for like a primary school disco because all the lights were on and also most of the people there were probably I would say like UK college age so in the UK you finish secondary school or high school at 16 and then you have two years of um, sixth form college so I'd say most people were probably like sixth form college age so 16 to 18 and as someone who's 23 I felt quite old I can't lie um so we all arrived there and we're like oh what in the school disco is going on here? Anyway, um, it, when the lights turned off, it was all good. And like the atmosphere, the vibes were incredible. So the way that it kind of worked is it was basic. You could have some seats like right at the back, but most people I'd say that were there were um, on the floor. And there was like, for a small little hall, there was like a full on mosh pit at one stage. <laughs> that was really good fun. Actually, where I am, because I do, I sometimes get quite overwhelmed I am a bit claustrophobic and in a big crowd like that 
it can sometimes be a little little much for me, you know? So um, so most concerts, actually, I think all concerts I've been to, apart from a little mix one when I was younger, <laughs> back in the day, that was a long, long time ago. That was my first concert. I think all of them have been seated, actually, mainly because they are often seated as cheaper because you're not as close to the artist. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just the ones I've been to. But anyway, so it was really cool because they had these two little bits on the sides, almost like wings, um, where you were a little bit higher than everyone else and not as many people stood there because they all wanted to get close to the stage. But actually... I had the best view there, standing there, because I could see everyone in the crowd. I didn't have people touching me, which was great, because sometimes, you know, when you all get squished together, that would freak me out a little bit. Um, and I could I could see Declan up there on the stage perfectly. And, oh my gosh, the vibes for some of the songs. Um, there's this trend at the moment, and I've, if you know what I mean, you're going to be like, yes, I know what you mean. Or if not, you're going to be like, no. But anyway, there's a trend at the moment going around. I was trying to explain this to my dad. And most things, as you guys know, my dad is a girl dad. Like, he is down with all the trends. He knows about all of the TikTok girlies, that kind of thing. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what? Yes, you are. I did a whole podcast about you listening to Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> but like, a anyway. Um... You, you, he, he loves it really he loves it really anyway so I was trying to explain to him there's this trend at the moment it's like my favorite animal is and it's like I don't know someone just like going going wild if that's like my favorite animal is me when I'm hungry or that kind of thing um so anyway there was this one I was watching loads of stuff online to get excited for the concert and somebody said my favorite animal is Declan McKenna performing this one song and it, they were like, if he's not going absolutely wild when he's performing this song, then anyway. So, but I, can I just say, his performance was incredible, especially for like a small little seaside town in this little art gallery performing. Like I thought, you know, maybe he'll do it like a little bit half effort because there's not really that many of us. But he still, he went for it for every single song and it was incredible. So also, very random, I was talking to one of the ladies from Pony Mag the other day and she was like, yeah, I went to the, that concert as well because I was like, oh, I'm going to a concert tonight. And she was like, oh my gosh, is it the Declan McKenna one? I was like, yeah. She was like, oh my gosh, I saw him the other week and he was great. So there we go. If you get the opportunity, would recommend. Um, but anyway, that is my concert story for today. Um, that is my, my the podcast for today. Sorry, I've done a really awkward outro. Um, but if you enjoyed it... Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast. And I will keep you updated. See you next time. Bye.